I can't, because there's people waiting. I can't uh, be nice to you. I have to be rough. Okay, there. Okay, I'll go here. Okay, I'll go here. Is that me?
Sorry, boss. All right. Okay. It's the way of the Carlini. No one ever gets out. Alive. Alive. If only Tony Baloney was here. Baloney? I should be beating up on Dave. Where's that? Where's that scoundrel? Well, he's well, uh, scoundrel. He need, he, need he, he has some stitches to do. Isn't he? He's got some stitches. So yeah. why? Because he uses him as a punching bag. Who did? Uh, Here. Uh, I could tell you why. You want these two? Jeez. If, if possible. If possible? Uh, okay. It's okay. All right. Go. We're even. Okay. Like that. Yeah, I see my black ass over here. Oh wow, that's even worse. Wow. Hmm. Let me do that. All right. Pack up. Hey guys, Brian here, and this game was an absolute piece of art from the duck, man. I mean, even going even before this position, the way that duck maneuvered all of his pieces into play here with the rook, with the knight on this beautiful outpost, with this queen here. And the last like five moves of this game was absolutely gorgeous. Duck playing all the right moves here, um, offering the trade of queens and knowing that Tex would take because there's just way too much pressure here. And this rook move by Duck um, a couple moves later here, um, this was a tremendous rook move because obviously Duck is threatening mate in one and the Tex knows that he figured out that if rook takes then you have the mate here so very very sneaky situation but we found out that wasn't even what duck was trying to do because duck's ultimate plan was yes to sack the exchange because the bishop was guarding the checkmate square that duck calculated and this is as pretty as it can get man beautifully done duck that is what an awesome way to set up the mate and end it there, man. <laughs> if you want to get duck coffee for that beautiful work of art, um, that beautiful mate, his link is in the video description. And it, was, it wasn't that Tex played bad, it was just that he kind of made one mistake and let duck in and build from there. And I gotta say, man, just watching duck play like this and... 
it was like watching a SEAL team execute a perfect plan here and get all the uh, <laughs> all the troops into place. And I've noticed that Duck. I mean, there was a point in the game here where he could have um, took the easy way out and just you know pretty much start trading pieces off and go into a superior end game, leveraging this B pawn here. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that is definitely one style of play, but I feel like Duck doesn't go for that kind of um, strategy and he likes to keep his pieces and trade off the ones he doesn't need and go in for a spectacular beautiful mate and that is um, it's a beautiful work of art man it's like in, you know in the beginning of every video I say our vision is um, for every um, everybody basically to learn how to play chess and experience the beauty of it this is what I'm talking about to see this kind of beauty and hopefully inspire them to play that way as well man so wow all right, man. That's uh, I just wanted to get that off my chest. And um, one more analogy before I forget: it's like watching a painter paint from start to finish, and like you can sense the painter's almost done. And you're looking at the painting; it's like, oh, what's it gonna be? What's gonna? Work? And then he puts the finishing touches on it, like you guys saw here, and you're like, damn, that is a work of art, man. So just want, yeah, it's it's. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> so good. Nicely done, Duck, man. And where did it all go wrong for Tex? And it was just, um, we can kind of pinpoint where it starts to slide in Black's favor here. And in the game, Queen C2 was played. Let's go move back here. Um, what would be another move for, for White here? Because after this point, it's pretty much um, all Black here. So this is the last kind of... Mm, way to kind of equalize it here. What would you play as white here? Alright, queen c2 is a little bit um, uh, passive in the sense that it's kind of blocked in by everything. One Another idea for white might be to play queen d2, attacking the pawn here. King h7, h3 to protect as a... Um, uh, oh, the name escapes me right now. But basically to block the square um, prophylaxis there we go and a this could be one continuation and basically a uh, game is pretty much even here slightly better for black at negative 0.6 but after after this point it was it was all black and it just the the advantage just kept on increasing as duck did his thing and <laughs> that was beautifully done there and um, yeah, that's that's about it. It was just it's, it's amazing, man. When you play a master and you just make one, this looks like a little, you know, what's the big deal? Queen c2, you develop the queen, connect the rooks, doesn't seem that bad, right? But that's like, that's just that's just the opening that duck needed, and that's all a master needs to kind of get in there and build this position and deliver a beautiful work of art like that, man. That is duck life indeed. Wow, all right. There it is. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you thought again in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to that notification. And thanks. I'll see you guys tomorrow.